First, I just want to say what an awesome honor it is to be receiving this work this award. I'm truly so grateful to be recognized like an organization like mine can and to be able to share this moment with each and every one of you. Now, I know I'm supposed to tell you about my work and why I'm here today, but before I jump into all of that, I wanted to take a second and tell a story about a young girl and her relationship with nature. When I was growing up, my absolute favorite activity was going on nature walks with my mom. She's a nature lover herself, so it was quite normal for us to spend Saturday afternoons or weekday evenings going on hikes in our local preserve. Like any other kid, I spent most of our time walking on logs, jumping in puddles, looking for salamanders. But something special about our hikes was that my mom took the time to introduce me to the landscape. She taught me the scientific names of all the trees. We identified different bird calls together. And ultimately, she showed me that nature is more than just a playscape. It's its own living, breathing entity. Over our, many, over our many adventures, I developed a deep connection with nature, but growing up, I quickly realized just how rare that had become. To most of the world, nature is just something to be used or destroyed, whatever it takes for a company to make money. Between the official onset of climate change, the deforestation in the Amazon, the melting glaciers, the biodiversity crisis, the discovery of the term climate refugee, and the floodings, and the droughts, and the storms, I've grown up in a generation characterized by the destruction and the downfall of nature. And with my deep connection to the environment, that was absolutely devastating. Ultimately, it was grief that drove me to action and a bit of fear too. Seeing the headlines nearly every day broadcasting the latest disaster struck me every time like the loss of a family member. Then on top of that confusion and grief, there was the lingering question of how long can we hold on? How much more could Mother Nature take before she took all of us down with her? Would we, even able, would we be able to survive in a barren world and would we even want to? It was grief and fear that drove me to action, but it was rage that drove me to activism. At that point, I didn't know much about solutions. All I knew was that I would dedicate my life until my last breath to fighting for them. And I'm finally starting to make good on that goal. So back to what we're here for. Um, my journey into activism really started after a climate science pre-college program I attended at the University of Montana in June of 2022. Now this program was one of the most amazing educational experiences of my life, but the most valuable thing I got out of that program wasn't the lesson plans or the amazing field trips. It was actually the friendships I made, deep connections to like-minded youth. Now, I know most of you can't see him, but I just got word that there's a Trevor Harms here today. So I'd like to informally introduce you all to one of my best friends from the program, tuning in today from his college in Vancouver, Canada. When I met him, though, Trevor lived in Colorado. And on some late night Snapchat conversations, we agreed that we needed to do something about what we had learned. We didn't really know what we should do though, until one morning I read an article on the Department of the Interior's 2023 to 2028 National Outer Continental Shelf Oil and Gas Leasing Proposed Program. Oh, that's a huge mouthful to basically say a Trump era plan outlining nearly 50 new offshore oil drilling leases in the Gulf of Mexico over the next five years, which would of course jeopardize any chance of reaching our net zero goals. Like any of you, I read that and was outraged. Thankfully, we still had several months of public comment period. After recruiting Emily Wild, one of Trevor's friends from his hometown, who's also here today, the three of us formed a team of around 20 young people from all over the US to join us in digging through hundreds of pages of government documents and other primary literature, looking for claims to debunk, arguments to make, research to cite, and in just two months, we had written a comment template for the public to use, created handouts and flyers to canvas for those comments, read way, way too many government documents, and had nearly 100 people from across the country submit a comment through our campaign. Now, it may not seem like much, but the three of us are extremely proud to say that we had a hand in dropping the proposed number of leases down to three total. That's the lowest number in US history. Our biggest win from this process, though, was realizing we didn't want to stop. And thus, one sunny afternoon over FaceTime, Trevor, Emily, and I founded National Youth for the Climate Emergency, or NICE, our acronym, a youth-centered organization with the goal of amplifying youth climate work across the country and creating a network of informed, connected, and empowered young activists. Now, around the same time that we founded NICE, I was accepted into the Kalamazoo Nature Center's Youth Climate Leaders Program, the precursor program to Kalamazoo's Ardea Youth Climate Coalition. 
If you're from the Kalamazoo area, you may have already heard of us, but for those of you who aren't, here's a little bit of background. In early 2020, several members of the Kalamazoo Nature Center, the Kalamazoo Climate Crisis Coalition, Schools for Climate Action, and Great Lakes Peace Jam saw a need in our community for youth education and involvement in local climate action. So with funding from the Nature Center, the Youth Climate Leaders Program was started, an application-based opportunity accepting 10 high school students per year from Kalamazoo County to participate in a 40-hour summer training week and gain membership to the Ardea Youth Climate Coalition which is named after the genus of the great blue heron that often frequents the field station. As a member of Ardea, we not only learn from local experts and build our climate knowledge during our training week, but we work in our community all school year for local climate action, environmental justice, and peer education. My first year in the program was in 2022 to 2023, the school year, and we did many things that year, but some of my favorites were celebrating World Food Day by home cooking 50 plant-based meals to hand out in the community, being one of two members to speak on a panel on climate education at Western Michigan University, gracing our city hall many times to speak before our city commissioners, and passing the Urban Bird Treaty and verdicts to protect local green spaces in Kalamazoo. Our group also won the Great Lakes Peace Jam's Youth in Action Award that year, thanks to our work in creating peace, social justice, and positive change. This year, we've taken on a lot more. As one of three senior leaders of the coalition, I've had the amazing opportunity to help lead the organizing efforts of many of this year's campaigns and events. One of our biggest was in September, the Fridays for Future March, on the steps of City Hall, calling for an end to the era of fossil fuels. We had the great honor of an opening speech by the one and only Denise Keel, and I followed up with an admittedly, admittedly passionate speech of my own. Overall, we had around 100 participants that day, most of whom were high school and college students, and our day was featured in its very first news article. That same month, I was one of three Ardea members to travel to Lansing with the Michigan League of Conservation Voters, where I participated in the Climate Rally for Our Future and lobbied representatives in support of the Clean Energy Future Plan. The very next week, we were back in Lansing again by invitation of Representative Julie Rogers, and I testified before the House Education Committee in support of a bill on environmental literacy and climate education. For our next event in November, we collaborated with Michigan League of Conservation Voters to organize Power Palooza, a youth-centered clean energy event held on Western Michigan University's campus that garnered support for the Clean Energy Future Plan. Over the course of just a few hours, we had nearly 100 Western students call our House of Reps, urging them to support the bill package, which passed that night. Thanks to our contributions to the fight for clean energy, a delegation of five Ardea members, including myself, was invited to attend the governor's bill signing in Detroit. And I had the amazing privilege of standing on stage as Governor Whitmer signed 100% clean energy by 2040 into Michigan law. Now, that about sums up Ardea's last four months and I'd love to get into our plans for the rest of the year, but for the sake of time, I'll let you all follow us on Instagram and see for yourselves. What I will say is we have more amazing youth-centered events line up, so be on the lookout for more from our day. Before I end, though, I wanted to take a moment to talk about some of the things that I've learned while reflecting on my activism journey. The first is that it truly does take a village. While it's definitely possible for an individual to spark change, think Miss Greta over there in Sweden, but it, it's just so much more powerful, so much more meaningful and personally fulfilling when you have a group to support you. So find your people, find your cause, and the rest will work itself out. The second is that activism truly is for everyone, and damn it, do we need more activists. To be an activist these days really just means putting power behind passion, and we need so many more in this fight to truly achieve all our goals and create a future we can responsibly hand down to our children. That being said, it's not all protests and public speaking. There really is a space for everyone, whether it's art or policy, history, or even video game making. Every skill is needed and every talent has a place. So if the things I've described so far aren't really your thing, don't let that hold you back. There's a place for you and your voice is needed. Lastly, and in my opinion, most importantly, we need to cultivate a culture of care. To be an activist is to care for the environment, so there's no better way to create more activists than by encouraging stewardship and forging connections with the land. Along with that, we need to continue to raise the youth voice for agency and advocacy learned early on 
create citizens dedicated to stewardship and environmentalism who know when and how to push for change. So to sum it all up, while the specific instance that moves someone to love and cherish nature varies from person to person, what moves them from nature lover to activist is often the same, witnessing the destruction we call climate change. Because activists often depend on a love of nature, we need organizations like Ardea and all of Michigan's nature centers to work even harder at getting people into nature and turning our citizens into nature lovers. But we also need all the mind, all the MICAN solidarities and nices working together to turn our nature lovers into activists. So if any of you out there have been stuck in this process at citizen or even at nature lover, let this be your sign to take up the cause. Get outside, get to know your mother, and take your knowledge and your passion and put it to good use. If any young people out there need a jumping off point, or if anyone knows any young people, I'm going to put some stuff in the chat when I'm done here for Ardea and for NICE with links to our Instagram and um, upcoming events. I'm also going to add my business card, so if anyone has any ideas about or questions about getting involved, don't hesitate to reach out. Now, last thing before I wrap up, I promise, I'd like to thank Mikan and Denise again for this award. It truly is an honor to be here and to share my story with all of you. I'd also like to thank my fellow activists at Ardea, this is a long list, get ready, Olivia Schenker, Elliot Spolstra, Andy Renault, Cadence Phillips, Amal Kostriva, Eddie Anderson, Harper Horvath, James Hunsinger, and Lily Hanscott. It's been so amazing to work with you all, and I truly do value our friendship. I want to send a huge, huge, huge thank you to our day as mentor and leader of the Climate Leaders Program, who is here today, Amber Hale, who I definitely would not be here without. Thank you so much. Of course, a shout out to Trevor Harms and Emily Wilde for sticking with me over FaceTime as we navigate running an organization from three very different corners of the world. To my two amazing mentors in both activism and science at WMU, Dr. Stephen Burtman and Alan Webb, to my amazing parents for getting me outside when I was little, and finally to my amazing boyfriend, Alex Scarf, for putting up with all my crazy activist rants and supporting me through my journey. I really couldn't have done any of this without all of you. So thank you all again for this award. It truly means so much, and I hope our work brings all of us together again soon. Thank you.